ASAP Science and Dr. Aaron Boster helped me understand how the coronavirus works and gave some tips to mitigate infection and how users of various MS medications should proceed in this growing pandemic. There's so much more to know than what I can squeeze into this video, but here comes a condensed version right now. What's going on y'all? I'm Damien. I was diagnosed with MS a few years ago and have been making content about the disease ever since. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about MS while laughing and gaining a sense of community, start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss any updates. ASAP Science's video helped me understand that COVID-19 came out of Wuhan, China and has infected over 100,000 people and killed over 3,000 people worldwide. Now how this particular one got its start is still unclear, but we do know that coronaviridae are an entire family of viruses that cause disease in mammals and birds. Remember SARS back in the early 2000s? Yeah, that was a coronavirus. And what makes a virus interesting is that it doesn't have any of the equipment to replicate within itself. It needs a host to replicate. And that means you. Such a gracious host. It gets in you via you coming in contact with an infected person's respiratory secretions, like a cough or a sneeze, physical contact with them, or touching a surface that the virus is on and then touching your eyes, nose, or mouth before washing your hands. Now once it's in you, it hijacks your body cells and uses your body's mechanisms to replicate itself and turn your body into a virus making machine. Now it does that a bajillion times until the cell explodes and releases those bajillion viruses to do the exact same thing in all your other cells. And as the virus begins to replicate itself and damage and kill the cells in your body, your body recognizes that and triggers an immune response. And that will create all the symptoms you begin to feel. The headache, the fever, runny nose, cough, chills, dizziness, and fever, it helps your immune system function better and make a more hostile environment for the virus. All the snot and the phlegm make it harder for the virus to attach to your cells and gets rid of dead virus and immune cells. The fever makes it a little too warm than the snuggly little 98.6 the virus thrived in. And your bones make more white blood cells, so you'll ache and you'll feel weak and tired as the body starts to prioritize fighting off the virus instead of doing your regular old day-to-day -day jams. So your body is doing a lot fighting off an invader, and also dealing with his immune response. And since it's some type of new type of flu that came out this past year, like the 19 and COVID-19 is 2019. So your body just doesn't know how to handle this new jam and it gives an extreme immune response. And that extreme response is part of what kills people and is kind of part of what makes this thing a really big deal. So great, I just explained how it works, but if you're immunocompromised, like me, what do you do? How do you avoid the disease and should you adjust your disease modifying therapy because it messes with your immune system? Well, multiple sclerosis champion Dr. Aaron Boster has something to say about all of this. First, he has some tips to mitigate your risk of infection. Sanitize your hands. Wash your hands with soap and water. And don't use hand sanitizer on visibly soiled hands. Like if you can see dirt on your hands, wash them with soap and water first. Now if you're washing your hands, it's very important that you get all up in the fingers and the palms and the nails and wash for 20 seconds to be effective. Some people sing happy birthday, but that's a little 1890s for me. So I sing songs like, Or you can sing that Beyonce jam, Love on Top. Or my favorite, Mom Spaghetti itself, Eminem's Lose Yourself. And 
Anyway, wash your hands and scrub your nails and rub your fingers for at least 20 seconds, okay? And use hand sanitizer or wash your hands before you eat, after you go to the bathroom, after you blow your nose or your cough or your sneeze, which leads us to cover your mouth when you cough or you sneeze. Not into your hand or into your sleeve, ideally into a tissue. And then throw the tissue away and sanitize your hands. And try to avoid touching your face, your, like your eyes and your nose and your mouth. Because if you touch a surface that has virus on it, and then you touch your nose and your mouth or your face, you're introducing virus into your body simply by touching your face. Stay at home if you're sick. Don't trudge through the sick and go to work where you can infect all your other coworkers. You ain't a true if you make it to work through all of this. Keep your typhoid Mary behind at home and don't infect anybody else, please. COVID-19 Mary. Avoid sick contacts. So if your friend Betty got the COVID and you want to make her feel a little better by making her some soup and bringing her by in a Tupperware and keeping her company, yeah, don't. Don't do that. Betty got the COVID. And if you don't want to get it either, you'll just leave the Tupperware soup outside her dough and come back and get it in a couple weeks when she's feeling better. Matter of fact, you can keep the Tupperware COVID, Betty. Love you, thank you, get better soon, boo-boo. Disinfect frequently touched surfaces. In your house or at your job, the doorknobs, the countertops, faucet handles, your cane, your phone. Although, don't use alcohol-based cleansers on electronics. That could damage the components. Stay fit and maintain a healthy lifestyle. Because if you're fit, you're gonna handle a viral insult much better if you're in good shape. Get your flu shot. Now double check with your provider about this though to make sure it's all good for you. Look, always contact your healthcare provider for recommendations that are right for you. That's a trend in this video, okay? And now the fun stuff. If I'm on a DMT that affects my immune system, what should I do? MS disease modifying therapies alter the immune response and as such, People taking them might be at increased risks of difficulties with the coronavirus. But all the medicines work differently. And like MS, this is not a one-size-fits-all situation. There's so much more to it than this, but medicines like the interferon and injectables like Copaxone, Rebif, Avonex, and Plegrity, they have lower risk profiles because they're immunomodulatory. They just modify the immune system not suppress it. Medicines like Tecfidera and Vumerity, the fumaric esters, they're a bit more complex because they work without suppressing the immune response, but in about 20% of the people who take Tecfidera, their lymphocyte cell count drops. It's not the medicine's intention, but there is some immunosuppressant activity going on. So if you're on one of these meds and your white blood cell count is normal, no worries. Now, if you want one of these meds and your white blood cell count is low, you might be at an increased risk of fighting off the coronavirus. A medicine like Abagio works in a cytostatic fashion. That means it doesn't kill cells, it just freezes them in time. And some studies say that this type of medicine has antiviral properties. So you might actually have a leg up on us who take these medicines that don't have antiviral properties. How about that? The S1P1 receptor modulators like Gelenia and Mazen, they suppress the immune response and therefore have a higher risk profile in regards to fighting off a disease. But then it starts to get a little bit more complex because factors like age, comorbid conditions, regions of the world you live in, they all play a factor in your risk profile. Now the highest risk factor would be the immune depleters, the immune reconstitution therapies, like Lemtrada and stem cell transplantation during the depletion phase. For the first couple of years, someone who uses this therapy would be at a higher risk. But from about three years out, they'd probably have the lowest risk. How about that? B cell depleters, drugs like Ocrevus and Rituxan. The depleters are what folks seem to be the most worried about on here, but there are plenty of factors at play. Like we mentioned before, comorbidities, age, geography. The most important takeaway from this video is that you should not stop or delay your disease modifying therapy on your own, but you should sit down with your doctor and together as a team, you will make the right decision for you. I mean, look, this coronavirus is no joke, but stay informed and wash your hands and you should make it through. So with that said, 